morning everyone and let me add my welcome to all of you for this first bridge conference here as i was watching that video the person with the cycle reaching the pinnacle more than his effort what impressed me was the photography something that wouldn't be possible without drones it's a film that has been taken by a drone which can be positioned at any place at any height at any angle and capture capture reality and present it to all of us now that's a whole new industry that has been created only in the last 18 months there are regulations it's just just look at that simple drone in addition to manufacturing in addition to the software that is written to control and manage these drones remotely there is a whole new profession that's been created which is the profession of drone pilots in the us there is regulation that has been defined as to what the drones can be used for what is the height up to which they can go what is it that they can reach there is still some restrictions like that drone should be within the line of sight or the visual sight of the pilot operating it but fairly liberal laws governing the use of drones in whatever applications that people choose to do india has also adopted the, the first step there is some regulation that's been announced as to how the drones can be used so there are drones that are been in order for the drones to be operated we should have certified pilots that's one of the requirements of the regulation and there are over 2800 certified pilots in the us flying drones a majority of them are retired war veterans retired from the air force but now they have become drone pilots they sit on the ground or stand wherever it is operate these drones which can do very many things A simple example that we can all relate to is inspecting the telecom towers. It's no longer necessary for people to go climb up, install, check, verify. Drones can do that by taking pictures. In fact, there are drones that are being developed that can fix these towers with the equipment that's mounted on those drones. They can inspect remote dams. They can inspect building sites, manage projects with the data that they collect, and so on. tremendous number of applications and the demand for this drone pilots certified drone pilots is expected to increase tenfold by 2020 in the next 3 years from the current 2800 it's expected to be something like 28000 there is a complete new opportunity skill set that is being created because of a technological invention that's that's the future of work that's the opportunity the last two days we were fortunate <coughs> tanmay bakshi a 14 year old child a prodigy who is an expert in artificial intelligence person of indian origin working in the us the family is there i'm sure many of you would have read about him in the internet a phenomenal person took to programming at the age of 5 just observing his father who was a programmer developed an interest his interest was fueled not only by the work that his father was doing but also encouraged by the family and became an artificial intelligence developer programmer at the age of 10 gave a ted talk at the age of 12 is the ibm watson ambassador or champion is a consultant to IBM at the age of 14 he runs a neural network company he has got a youtube channel and he has got hundreds of youtube uh, youtube programs or videos recorded that teaches program he was he is in india he spent a day in iit madras where there is a pan india pan iit program that's going on he came to the cognizant office yesterday I spent about an hour talking to us about artificial intelligence and the opportunities that throws up just one hour phenomenal interaction 
In fact, he was in Hyderabad, I think, last year in the NASCOM Data Analytics Summit. So a 14-year-old child presenting the opportunities that exist in the area of artificial intelligence. Two or three statements that he made, which are very far-reaching. First one, he said, the idea of artificial intelligence or the community of people who work in the area of AI, it's not to create a human replica. He went on to the extent of saying it is impossible to create the cognitive powers that a human being has in a computer. That is not the intention. It's purely the intention of AI workers all over the world to augment the capability, the cognitive capability and the intelligence that human beings possess so that we can be more efficient, <coughs> more productive, more innovative as we go forward, which is what is required in society. So there is this small clip where the doctor was saying, we don't need parents to create children anymore, we can create them in the lab. I don't think that's the objective of whatever work that is going on in the scientific community. Perhaps to understand how the brain works, but not necessarily to do that. So that is not a fear that all of us should live with. There are three areas that he specifically mentioned where there is opportunity for people to grow. Artificial intelligence applied in the area of healthcare, artificial intelligence in the area of financial services and global financial currencies management, including things like Bitcoin, etc., where Tanmay himself is leading some projects in that specific area. And three, in the area of space research. Space, I mean, three of the industries that are growing the fastest, the pharmaceutical and the healthcare industry, the space and the aviation industry are areas where it can benefit a lot by artificial intelligence. So the example that he quoted of artificial intelligence helping in the area of healthcare took a very simple case of New Zealand or Australia where the incidence of skin cancer apparently is the highest in the world. So in order to understand and identify at an early stage an occurrence of melanoma in those countries, they took samples, the skin samples of literally hundreds of citizens in those countries, analyzed, put them through the artificial intelligence engines which were trained to read these images and then infer. AI is essentially just training the machine and then it can make some inferences that can be used. And they were able to identify at least a hundred opportunities of reducing the incidence and to identify the incidence of this skin cancer at least two years before current technology is permitted. As a result of which the cure can be faster. We said the question that was asked is how can we roll this out faster? If you have the ability to identify, also the ability to prevent, or at least the understanding of how to prevent, how can we roll it out faster? His answer was, we don't have enough people to work in that area. We don't have enough qualified people. The type of people that we require in order to get into the space are not yet available, they are not trained. And the faster we train people in this area, the better it is going to be. Again, a big area of opportunity. Third example, probably I'll stop with this example and talk a little more about why we are here today. <coughs> is in the area of natural language processing, voice recognition, speech recognition, something that we in the information technology industry go through every day. As the world moves from an industrial world to a digital world, there are plenty of changes that are taking place, some creating new jobs, <coughs> many opportunities and many of these technologies eliminating existing jobs. Particularly, one example that I am talking about is about voice recognition, simple task of identifying or recognizing a voice. So many of us have experienced call centers. When we apply, when we call, there is an operator who takes the call and asks us some questions. You know, simple application like if they want to know them bank balance, you call up a number, the person wants to verify the identity of the individual by asking some questions like what's your name, what's your date of birth, what's your address, etc. And then 
after confirming the identity, the call center operator provides whatever information that they are interested in. There are, there are literally hundreds of employees in call centers who do this type of thing, not just in India, all over the world. So if you have a simple thing like a voice recognition, which the computer can automatically recognize, a pre-recorded stored voice of mine, which is available in the computer, and when I answer with a simple hello or stating my name, the computer can automatically identify, match the voice, and say, this is this individual, confirms it. And then if the question, it's a simple question like a balance or any other predetermined questions, the machine can automatically answer. Eliminating literally hundreds and hundreds of jobs in the call centers. And this technology is something that is available. The technology that has been perfected by a company called Unifor, a startup, a new company that's based out of Chennai, that does the voice recognition, that is able to provide this in Indian languages. We are something that is very, very unique. We have different languages, people ask or make queries, multiple languages, and the computer should be able to understand it, those type of things. Voice identification is the first step. Speech recognition is the next step. Speech recognition across multiple areas. Again, a great opportunity, a great growth area for all the young students who are studying computer science or in the information technology area. So these are some examples of where the world is headed, where technology is helping industry in order to create new types of jobs, creating higher value added jobs, creating more productive jobs, and at the same time, eliminating some of the routine jobs that may well be done by computers. So that's the opportunity that's ahead of us. The opportunities in the world of technology advancement is immense. Literally unmeasurable opportunity that is there. Which is where we, as the industry and the academic institutions, have a great role to play. The role that we have to play on the part of the academicians is to create the talent pool that is required for the future. On the part of the industry is to innovate and imagine and recreate a digital world where these talented people will come participate, contribute and provide a more peaceful, better life for all of us. And how does ICT Academy work in that particular area? We saw a number of examples. I don't want to repeat many of the things that have been said. But there are three or four key points that I wanted to mention as to what gave us the courage to expand. This is an initially Government of India funded project, very specifically for the state of Tamil Nadu, just to improve the soft skills of students coming out, to improve the faculty in the various engineering colleges so that they can be current and they learn continuously even if the curriculum does not change. And three, to make students from tier two, tier three colleges more competitive. In the IT industry, particularly the large companies, tend to go to those colleges that have earned a reputation for themselves, select students through campus interviews. But there are a lot of, a number of bright students who are was studying in other colleges in the interior parts of the state in what are known as tier 2, tier 3 cities and lack the opportunity to compete with the rest of the people who are, study, who are studying in recognized institutions. We want to build or bridge that gap. And the success of ICT Academy predominantly in the first six years of its operation where the model got tweaked is two key challenges it met and it realized two important goals. <coughs> The first goal that it accomplished was to increase the share of students coming out of Tamil Nadu in the IT industry. Tamil Nadu because that's where we started. There were more number of students getting into the IT industry from Tamil Nadu than any other state at the end of about four, four and a half years of the operation. And two, which is more significant, there were more students from the tier 2, tier 3 city colleges who became part of this technology industry than ever before. 
ICT Academy managed to improve the competitive ability of all these colleges and the students from those colleges through the various programs that were highlighted. And then they became part of the industry. And that's when it was recognized by many states as well as the Planning Commission of the NIPI and said this is a model that has to be replicated elsewhere. And uh, the Ministry of HRD, AICTE, uh, Ministry of IT have been partnering with us on specific projects to improve the employability of students. There is a very large project that's being undertaken by SCT Academy in the Northeast to integrate them, students from the colleges there, into the mainstream industry. So that was the primary goal. We took upon us as that, that's the overall goal where we want to empower the students wherever they are into being part of this high growth, high learning technology industry. And that's the mission with which we are starting operations in multiple states. It's not just about enabling them, providing them skills to enter the industry, but to give them a lot more than that through a win-win partnership with every institution. To give you just a couple of examples, we realized after about four years of our operation that entrepreneurship is also an important aspect that we have to teach all the students and the faculty members and encourage the students to think big and be creative and perhaps even start up while they are in the college. So we went through exercises in a number of colleges to teach the students what entrepreneurship is all about. Encourage the colleges to set up incubation centers in their respective institutions so that students with ideas can try it out within the college campus before they venture out. We created an ecosystem where the entrepreneurs who have succeeded, who belong to Thai, the Indus Entrepreneurship Organization. Thai is a global organization with about 65 chapters in 65 cities globally. It has more than 50,000 entrepreneurs who are enrolled as chapter members whose mission is to encourage entrepreneurship, participate, mentor young entrepreneurs. So Thai participates in the locations that we have these colleges where incubation centers are installed so that entrepreneurship can flourish in those areas. And there is a similar opportunity that exists here in Pune where we will work with the local Thai chapter and see if we can establish incubation centers in interested colleges and provide an opportunity for young minds to create something on their own. So this is yet another network, yet another ecosystem possibility that exists. And the third and the more important one that was covered in the presentation is the participation or the partnership that we have with industry leaders who are committed to education. We saw their names of Oracle, Autodesk, VMware, Microsoft. These are institutions that provide faculty for teaching. They provide the course material and course content. They encourage project work among those companies. They provide free software, etc., etc. Tremendous amount of help that we have received ICT Academy because we are able to go to them and represent that this is our motive and this is the government's motive. We are working in a partnership where we are not encouraging any competition among colleges, but we do want all the students and the colleges to succeed. And the, the, the single biggest gap that they are able to bridge now that we would otherwise find very challenged to bridge is to train the faculty in the latest technologies. As you know, the curriculum as defined or as dictated by the, the institutions hasn't changed in a while. The only changes that are being brought about is by individual institutions which have taken the initiative of adding some subjects, topics, if they have the liberty to do it and encourage students and teachers to create that kind of subject and topics to be discussed, not in the regular academic sessions, but outside of that academic session. Because, you know, all the, the regulations prevent institutions from changing the curriculum, etc. So this is where NASCOM played a very significant part. NASCOM's Sector Skill Council, all of you must be familiar with the National Skills Development Corporation that defines Sector Skill Councils. 
on the sector skill council of the technology industry, IT, IT, ES industry as it is called, as defined new technology areas, qualification packs and national occupation standards for each one of these skills. These are, they have divided the skill requirements into eight levels, level one to level eight, level one being the basic level, level eight being the most advanced. And the sector skill council has defined content or the curriculum for levels six, seven and eight, which is probably most appropriate from any other colleges that are represented here. And the partners that I mentioned like Microsoft, Autodesk, VMware, etc. are very familiar with the level 6, 7, 8 qualification packs defined by the Sector Skill Council and they have the material and the faculty trained appropriately to come in and partner with the institutions and train the faculty and in turn train the students. That's a great value, immeasurable in terms of the impact that it creates and all of it available pretty much free to all the member institutions here. When we started in the state of Tamil Nadu, initially, the first one or two years, we had enrollment of about 100 to 120 colleges. And today, more than 80% of the colleges, the engineering institutions, are members of ICT Academy. More than 500 colleges, deemed universities, are all subscribing members of ICT Academy, benefiting from the partnership that we have with Thai, with the Ministry of IT, with other educational and research institutions, which is something that we would like you to take advantage of. And finally, just want to mention a few names so that you can take advantage in terms of contacting, building a relationship with all these institutions. First and foremost, the, the board of ICJ Academy has in it uh, Mr. Balakrishnan, who is a former CFO of Infosys, is a very active member as far as ICT Academy is concerned. He's also an angel investor and one of the things that he wants to do is as the incubation centers in many of these institutions take off, he wants to be a partner to identify opportunities and identify firms or individuals who are worthy of seed investments or angel investments and make available funds for those type of opportunities to flourish. A very good noble cost, win for him and the companies that he represents and an opportunity for young students to get funding if they have good ideas. And the second, another board member is Mr. Mohan Reddy, who is the, uh, the previous chairman of NASCOM, founder chairman of SEM, a Hyderabad based engineering design company who has offered his help in the areas of engineering design and offered help for faculty members to visit the companies. You know, one of the things that you saw in the video, Dr. Anil Sastrabhade, who mentioned that some of the professors, their interest will be well served if they spend some time in industry institutions, in industry. So there is an opportunity that's available to Mohan Reddy was offered it and I am sure we can get that kind of a commitment from, from other industry leaders. This is something that we have been doing when we started way back in Chennai where a number of industries offered opportunities for faculty members to spend some time to understand what is going on in the industry so that they can go back to the respective colleges and speak to the students from a position of authority and knowledge as to what happens in that industry. That is an opportunity that will become increasingly available to all the institutions that are members of the ICT Academy. So these are the, the facilities, opportunities that are available for all of you. You only need to ask, only need to take advantage of all these opportunities that are becoming available so that we can create better, brighter, more employable, more entrepreneurial students in our community. I just want to thank members from Tata Consultancy Services, there was reference that was made. When this initiative was announced by the Government of India with the funding by the Government of India, there were a number of companies that offered to seek fund. And one of the major companies that was to seek fund this initiative was Tata Consultancy Services. They have stood by ICT Academy for a long time. 
I believe they have presented large numbers here also today. Let's take advantage of their presence here under this agenda. Thank you very much.